Balancing chemical equations, remember, is based on the law of conservation of mass. This law states matter cannot be created or destroyed. What that basically means for us in terms of balancing equations, we must account for every atom. Let's take our example of solid aluminum reacting with oxygen gas to form solid aluminum oxide. I'm going to make a table listing the elements that are involved in this reaction. It would be aluminum and oxygen. I'm going to count how many atoms there are on the reactant side and how many there are on the product side. I'm also going to begin by putting a line in front of each formula. That tells me where I can put my coefficients if needed to balance the equation. Looking on the reactant side, on the left side of the arrow, I see I have one aluminum atom and two oxygen atoms. The two oxygen came from the subscript in the formula. On the product side, I have two aluminum atoms and three oxygen atoms. You can see from this table, it's not balanced. There is only one atom of aluminum to begin with, and we have two in the products. Since we cannot create matter out of nothing, we have to make sure the number of atoms for each element are the same on both sides. So for, I'm going to need to change this from just being one aluminum atom to two. And I do that through a coefficient. Now that changes my aluminum to two atoms of aluminum and two atoms of aluminum on the product side. Over on the reactant side, I have two and three. This is more difficult because I cannot just add a coefficient to one side. I'm going to have to add them to both. You can kind of think of this the way we did lo lowest common denominators in math class. So the lowest common denominator here would be six. So I would have to have three of these oxygen molecules to get a total of six. And I'd have to have two of the aluminum oxide molecules to get a total of six. But also remember the coefficient in front of aluminum oxide not only says we now have six oxygens, because the two coefficient times the three subscript, but now it's also changed how many aluminum atoms we have. So we now have four aluminum atoms. And now we're off balance with the aluminum. So I have to change this coefficient from two to four, because I need four on that side, not just two. So the balanced equation is four atoms of aluminum, three moles of oxygen gas, three molecules of oxygen gas, and two molecules of aluminum oxide. This would give me a balanced equation. Another way of thinking about this is thinking about it visually with drawings. If I try to represent an aluminum atom, this is one aluminum atom, where this is aluminum, an open circle would be oxygen. Over here, I see that I have two oxygen atoms, and here I would have two aluminums, three oxygens. Now you can see this is visually doesn't balance. So what I'd have to do is I'd have to add another aluminum atom. I can't just change the subscript. I now have two of these. So I put a two in front of here. With the oxygens, if I add one more set of oxygens on the reactant side, I now have one, two, three, four, but I only have three over here. So I add another molecule of aluminum oxide. I couldn't just add one aluminum or one oxygen. I had to add a whole other one of those molecules. And now I have six, so I add two more of the oxygens on this side. But now I have one, two, three, four, and only have two, so I have to add a couple of those. 
So now when I look at it, I see there are four aluminums. One, one, two, three, four. I have three molecules of oxygen. One, two, three. And I have two molecules of aluminum oxide. One, two. By having this many, I can now visually see four aluminums on each side and six oxygens on each side.